Well, I went and got it last night. This is a John Deere. This is the John Deere mulcher here. It's got, uh, and I hope this truck will start. I've got a problem with my batteries. I guess I went to go get it yesterday and the batteries was fine, so. It's got some carbide teeth. Somebody's been running it in the ground. This is a rental unit uh, from, this is a rental unit from Bridgeport John Deere. That's the same people that I buy my small stuff from. I buy all my skid steers. I buy all my skid steers from uh, from Bridgeport. My tractors from Bridgeport. Small stuff. Actually, I bought that 700 from Bridgeport, but most of my big iron, big yellow iron, it comes from Leslie's. Got the dump truck back. I have no idea how much it cost, but we got it back. Let's see if this thing will start and let's head to the farm. Uh, I mean, so far it's doing an awesome job. I, I like it. I don't know. I haven't gotten into anything real big yet to tell you whether or not that's a stump right there. This is what I was really. All right. See, I run her in there pretty hard that time and installed him. We'll let him build back up there a second. Uh, this is what I was interested in was this right here. See, I hit them with my tractor and that sucks. If I can get them things ground down. I mean, it looks like it's doing a pretty good job. Let's try it over here. Let's do some more bigger stuff. I'm getting a little bit more braver with it. I'm lifting it up coming down on it. I was just driving forward on this little, this is just a little autumn olive here. This ain't real big stuff at all. I mean, they're a big autumn olive, but I, I, if you had a heavy duty bush hole on a skid steer, you could probably knock this stuff out pretty, pretty easy with it. I had to stop down there and show my dad. I mean, the head's not pulling down on the machine too much. I don't, that gauge is in, still in the yellow, and I've let it build and everything, and I can't get it to come out of the yellow, so I don't know what all that's about. Uh, I mean, I might be hard on it and rough on it, and we're just kind of, see, I kind of run it in the ground every now and then. That, it's getting, I gotta figure out, I gotta find that area that, it's not uh, running into the ground, but I'm still cutting it close to the ground. I mean, it don't look like I'm chewing up the dirt, so it may just, that may be where it's supposed to go. I'm going to probably give you guys a little bit different view. I don't know. I mean, that camera's shaking. My phone's shaking pretty hard. It's awesome, though. I mean, I, I like it. I like it. I don't know if it's worth $30,000, but it's, I like it. It leaves a nice product. But again, I mean, I probably could have mowed this faster with my skid steer brush hog than I could have this thing. But I haven't gotten into anything real big yet. I've cleared all this off years ago. This was this is my this is actually my pasture, and I haven't mowed this in three years. I think it's been about three years since I've had a bush hog on all this. be the most efficient way to clear autumn olives. Um, I think it would probably be the most effective way to clear them. It would give it a better look and outlook at the end of it. It would probably be a lot less destructive on the equipment because the machine is designed to cut. But I was, man, if I was going to buy, I'd probably buy a new bush hog before I buy one of these. say that right now. I, I, let, let me run it for a, let me run it for a couple hours, and I'll make my determination. You know, I've been clearing land for years. I mean, that's whenever we had a years ago. Whenever we lost, I don't remember 
where that being that heat. I'm gonna back out there. Um, well, we lost we lost some work one time with a with a mobile home company, CMH. We lost a lot of work when they went through some management changes, and they brought in they brought in their their people to do their work, and we lost all that work. So we had to find something to do. We had to find something to do quick. I had a family to feed, kids to raise, and so you know I, I spent I invested what little bit of money I had laying around in a, in a, in a machine and. And uh, I got out there and started beating on doors and started, uh, you know, talking to people and getting getting work. And one of the things I started doing was was mowing overgrown pastures. And I'll tell you right now, I I, I beat my skiss here to death running that thing mowing. That's the reason why I stand there apart. You know that I, I sold my old I sold my old dozer. It got old, it got, you know, got depleted, and, and it was still a great machine. Uh, there was nothing really wrong with it at all. I done put a bunch of money in it, but, you know, it was time to, to replace it. It's time to replace it with a new machine. And I, I just sold the old one. I sold the old 650. Uh, that was the second dozer that I bought as, as my little company, and, and I sold it. So, you know, the skid steer, it... It done the same thing. I mean, it was getting old. It was starting to have some problems. Uh, not that my 650's got problems, but what I'm getting at here is, is you know, the, the skid steer was getting some problems. I put a bunch of money in it, and uh, and it just, it was time to, to buy another one. So I bought this new 333G, uh, and I just couldn't bring myself, I cannot bring myself to sell my old CT332, I just can't, you know, because it's like part of the family. That thing fed my family, growed my business, and I owe it, I owe it a lifetime. I owe it the rest of its life just to sit down there on my lot, and it loads a truck, it loads now and then, it moves something around. We don't use it nowhere near like we used to, because it's old, you know, it's, it's, it's served its life, it's old. I just can't bring myself to throw it out. So I put it out in a pasture and I treat it like an old greyhound. I throw it out in the pasture and let us live its life out there. You know, it'll, it'll be fine. Because it's helped keep my family fed. I mean, it, it's it's really clearing that stuff up. I love that. I mean, it is really, and it's mulching. I know you guys can't see this product, but it's leaving behind. It's pretty easy to operate as far as managing where you're at with it. I'm not.
Well, I guess you probably saw me about to screw up and drop a tree on my head, but I'm I'm not real impressed, I'll just tell you. I mean it it does a good job, but I'm not impressed. I could have I probably could have done everything that I done here except the stumps. Um and of course, I wouldn't have cut the small the, the small poplars down. Uh, I could have done all that in half the time with a bush hog with a rotary cutter. So uh, I won't be buying one of these. Now I'm not saying they don't fit the application needed, but uh, I'm just not. As far as speed production, it's not a speed production machine. It is a quality product machine that when when it clears and it chews it up, it chews it up a lot. I mean, it's it's fine. It is fine around here. Again, and it could be these blade, the, the teeth on this cutter maybe wore some. I don't, I'm not real familiar. I'm not real familiar. I mean, they look like they got plenty of meat left on them. And it, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's something else. But the gauge, it, I don't know if my machine is not, either that gauge is faulty or my machine is not putting out adequate it's not putting out adequate uh, pressure, but uh, should be. Machine ain't got a thousand hours on it. That might be what it is. But here comes the old man. We'll get the old man's take on it and see what he says too. You guys have a fun day.